Bunch of other important stories across the country I didn't have a chance to talk to you about yesterday. I wanted to get to now. As you know, well, we already talked about Aunt Becky. She's getting sent away. Were you a full house watcher, producer Mark? Of course I am. I, I'm a fuller house watcher as well. Yeah, such a good show. I was, I was such a fan. And it makes me so sad. Aunt Becky's going to prison. I thought, I remember when I was a kid, I was like, Aunt Becky is the most beautiful woman in the world. I thought she was amazing when I was like, I don't know, 14 or something watching that. Uh, I was a big Aunt Becky fan. And then during the Seventh Heaven days, I did not like that show particularly. But when I was in high school, uh, the Je- Jessica Biel in Seventh Heaven, I thought was like the perfect, you know, the perfect lady my age. Uh, it wasn't a lady, it was a young woman, whatever. So uh, those are two shows that I definitely, I definitely had favorites on. I was a big Aunt Becky fan and a big Mary Camden fan. I remember her name. So now we got Aunt Becky going to prison. We're talking about the college admission scandal. Like I, I think that there's a little bit of political headhunting going on here because ex- it's exactly what producer Mark was saying. Hey, you got to buy yourself in. You got to be a little rich brat. You got to pay the price. Okay, true, true. But maybe the price is a little heavy on this one. You're sending the parents away. I mean, they're paying hundreds. They've been ruined, humiliated. They're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. You know, no, nobody lost a leg here. You know, I, I think it's a little meaning that because of what they did, I think that's a little intense. But oh, we'll see. We'll see what ends up. Uh, I mean, I, I assume that that's the sentence is what that's what's been agreed to. But until a judge. Oh, I had to point this out. The Washington Post ran this story that uh, the Flynn in the Flynn case, they're looking to overturn Flynn's conviction. Flynn has not been convicted. I don't know why legal writers and national security writers don't seem to understand this. A guilty plea is results in a conviction almost always, but it is not a conviction. You are convicted when the judge passes sentence. That is the conviction. Amazing. This is the headline of the Washington Post. I, I didn't even go to law school and I know this stuff. Producer Mark, pretty impressive. Yes, you're just so great, Buck. Thank you. See, that's what he's here for. Just in case I'm I've, I've having an off day. I'm like, Mark, tell me how wonderful I am. He's like, eh. I'm like, all right, good enough. I'll take it. You didn't want to go outside today, so you didn't want your head to be able to fit through the door. That's important. Yeah. That's important. Um, so we, other, we have another story here from the, uh, the inspector general uh, at the State Department or about the inspector general. And I, I will tell you that, you know, Pompeo, who is, is an impressive guy. You know, I like I like Pompeo. He's done a very good job for the administration. Uh, he's not backing off this. IG situation at all. Uh, he's basically saying that, that this guy, Steve Linick, he needed to go a long time ago and the president did the right thing. Here he is playing nine. So there's been lots of discussion about this. I've read a number of reports. Let me, let me say three things. First, uh, the president has the uh, unilateral right to choose who he wants to be his inspector general at every agency in the federal government. Uh, They are presidentially confirmed positions, and those persons, just like all of us, serve at the the pleasure of the President of the United States. In this case, I recommended to the President that Steve Linick be terminated. I frankly should have done it some time ago. Not backing down at all. Oh, the media has created a firestorm around this. Oh, they say there's corruption. I mean, the uh, Secretary of State here is like, meh, I don't think so. We're not we're not going to we're not going to dance to the tune the mainstream media and the libs lay out for us. Not not going to do it. And then when you have some of the the usual characters out there saying, oh, look at this, the Trump administration. Oh, it's the the destruction of ethics and the, all this other stuff. Uh, Pompeo's like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to take words of advice on this one from, say, Senator Menendez. Play clip 10. Here, here's the last thing to think about as you see these stories that have been leaked to you all, right, to the press. This is all coming through the office of Senator Menendez. I don't get my ethics guidance from a man who was criminally prosecuted, case number 15-155, in New Jersey Federal District Court. A man for whom his Senate colleagues, bipartisan, said basically that he was taking bribes. That's, uh, that's not someone who I look to for ethics guidance. And so I'll continue to do the right thing to make sure the State Department is served by every employee, including our attorney, Inspector General. And we'll make sure the State Department continues to deliver on behalf of the American people. The tactics of Trumpism. Pompeo style. 
They come at him instead of saying, oh, I'm so sorry. You're right. Maybe maybe I shouldn't have fired the inspector general. Maybe maybe you shouldn't have allowed. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Please don't please don't come after me and, and hurt me. Pompeo's like, yeah, actually, I'm a, we're allowed to do this. I recommended he do it. I stand behind it. It was the right move. And uh, Menendez, Senator Menendez, the guy's a jerk and has no standing whatsoever to complain about anybody else's ethics. This is so important. This is so important because if you play the game the way that they set it up for you, if you, if you, if you allow them to say, oh, I thought you were ethical. Don't you want to be ethical? Oh, maybe we should allow an into maybe we should allow a special counsel. You know, if, if you let them get away with it, they'll just they'll just keep on beating you by changing the rules and making sure that you're never on a never on an even playing field at all, that you can barely get on the playing field. So what is the alternative to that? The alternative is, as we know, to fight back Trump style. And I like that this is the way that Pompeo is approaching the situation um, because it's it's just clearly such a, a, a another frenzy in the media to say that Trump is corrupt and doing something that's terrible and all this other stuff. You know, like, for example, Joe Scarborough. I mean, this really is now uh, like a cry for help. This guy's show every morning. It's, it's such a waste of everyone's time. Although I guess if you really believe that Trump is Hitler and destroying the country and everyone's dying because Trump is so awful, uh, which is really a, a me- this is a mental illness to think about, to think things are that way. Uh, then maybe you enjoy watching Scarborough. But but here is this this uh, this overpaid fraud over at MSNBC. I mean, he's overpaid if he makes more than a dollar doing the show because it's worthless. Uh, here's what he says. Play six. And when they hear Donald Trump saying he would do nothing differently. When they hear Donald Trump saying, you look at the number of all those black people have died, all those white people have died, all those Hispanics have died, all those Asian Americans have died. You look at all the Americans who have died. Mm -hmm. We're going towards 100,000, ranked 131 out of 140 countries, according to Johns Hopkins. And he says it's a badge of honor. Those numbers, as Willie said earlier today, you know, they hear that. And that has an impact on them. And that has an impact on the way they vote again. I'll say I'll say it again. I've been saying it every day. I don't understand his behavior, why it's getting more out of control by the day, unless he has simply no control over himself, because everything he's doing is driving his poll numbers down. Everything that I spoke to the president about yesterday in person at length on every issue, he has understanding he has clarity he has resolve he has purpose this guy sees things the way that you and i see them which is through the lens of truth and reality he understands what's happening in the country he knows that there's a lot of suffering in a whole bunch of ways from the virus and in the from the economy and wants to do everything he can and get us back on our feet what is joe scarborough talking about well notice how it also makes it a Uh, He tries to make this a racial issue. uh, Oh, because of the disproportion. First of all, his thing about America is like number 131 out of 140 countries. Uh, That's if you don't adjust for population, which is which is stupid. Okay, if you're not adjusting for population, it's a worthless, a worthless comparison. Absolutely worthless comparison. So why even do that? Well, if you're just if you're a fraud, if you have no intellectual depth or, or honesty whatsoever, which is certainly the case with with Scarborough, who who has flipped his entire political ideology, it seems, just because of his uh, his bosses, the people paying him over at MSNBC. This is what they demand of him. And then there's also the ego aspect of it, the ego aspect of it that he is um, not in good with the president. He's not close with the president. That's also another problem, right? That's something that he can't handle uh, because access for so many of these people is so very critically important. So that's that's what the what's oh, and then also on on the racial side of this that, oh, because there's a a disproportionate impact from the virus on uh, communities of color as you know, would be this is I think I think that's the way MSNBC prefers. That's the preferred nomenclature uh, that somehow that there's there's like a racial angle to this when, first of all, Joe Scarborough does not care about the poor, does not care about minorities in any particular way at all. That's a fraud. And it's just nonsense. OK, it's all virtue signaling. He's you know, he, he all, all this guy does is, you know, fly 
private between mansions and lecture all the rest of us about how, you know, we need to stay home and listen to the experts and Trump is awful. The guy's the guy's the worst. I I really I have to find somebody who thinks that this is a good show. I, I don't know anybody who enjoys the show, learns anything from the show, but they keep it on the air. I think this is what Democrats watch because, yeah, see, even Republican Scarborough hates Trump. So it must be true. This is this is the scam. I mean, this is the fraud that's at the heart of the whole thing. But it's just uh, it's a shame. But what do you expect from NBC and MSNBC? And you know, they're just uh, it's bad places, bad places uh, that, that do not do what they say they are going to do uh, for journalism, for truth, for the country. And completely fraudulent. Oh, but Bernie Sanders also wants you to know that uh, Joe Biden has a good chance of winning. I, I have I have some thoughts on this. Take take just a moment here. We'll come back and get into what, what the burn is saying. Well, I'm not running his campaign, but what I have done with him uh, is to establish six task forces. Uh, which are dealing with all of the major issues in this country, including the economy, health care, criminal justice, immigration, education, climate change. And we have brought some of the strongest progressives in this country onto those task forces. So I would answer your question, Stephanie, by saying uh, I think there is an excellent chance that Biden is going to win. But in order to guarantee that, he is going to have to reach out to working class people and young people in a way that he has not done up to now. And he is going to have to make it clear. He stands with a working class in this country that is struggling right now. He is prepared to take on the corporate elite and the big money interest in order to create an economy that works for all, not just the few. Let's just be honest about one thing here. Bernie Sanders does not know what Joe Biden is running for president for, other than to be the Democrat running for president. But you know the truth is that if Biden needs somebody to pretend that he knows why he's running, Bernie will step in and do the job. That's right. Biden's like, I ought to be be president because, you know, the thing and the the place and uh, I'm, I'm here and I just... Uh, you know, people tell me, be president. So I said, oh, okay. But Bernie's like, look, what about the working class? What about socialism? What about this, that, and the other thing? And Biden can just kind of co-opt that. So this is why they're working together on all these different committees and such, because they recognize that, you know, they're going to have to come up with a why for Biden other than not Trump. I mean, not Trump will go, uh, will go far enough, I suppose. Um, but they really want to get close to winning this thing, or they really want to make sure they win this thing. They're going to be, look, it's going to be close. Understand this. This is a prediction that I think if we were to mark this down, just give it some time, I'll, I'll look pretty accurate. Uh, when, when push comes to shove, this is going to be a close election. And I, I don't care what happens because you have 49% of the electorate uh, already just built in to vote for Biden. Forty nine percent. Maybe even, you know, maybe even like it's going to be 50 50 in the percentages, but it'll be 50 point two, you know, against forty nine point eight, you know, something like that. I mean, it's going to be a very narrow choice this fall, because even if the economy gets up and running again, they're going to blame Trump for all the losses this year and all the downturn. And let's let's be honest with each other. It's not Trump's fault, but it's a bad situation. And Trump knows. He said this to me yesterday. He knows. Look, this is terrible. With the greatest economy in the world, this thing comes in. It turns it upside down. And we're doing the best we can to try and you know mitigate the damage from this in every respect. Like I said, though, he told me no second shutdown. No second shutdown at the national level, at least, which is important. But it's going to be a razor thin election and we have to understand that right now Uh, we should not get complacent joe biden is a horrible candidate i mean the guy really isn't isn't up for this at all and even if he were up for it mentally and physically there's no reason there's no good uh explanation for why this guy should be president i still have some degree of 
disbelief that after all the candidates the Democrats put forward, this is what they ended up with. I mean, I still there's a, there's a level at which I just feel like, how, how could this be? How, how could this be the best that they can come up with? But it is. This is where we are. And they're going to do everything they can. I mean, they're going to go kitchen sink, pull the plumbing out of the wall, go, you know, into the septic tank, rip that out too. whatever they have to do. They'll throw everything they've got at Trump. They'll bring everything they have against this guy. And that also means trying to trying to tilt the election, the actual process of the election in a way that will favor Democrats. Because as we know, they're always saying they want more voters. But what they really want is more opportunity to cheat. That's what they want. More options. Because there's people, people go to prison every year for voter fraud. But then they tell us there is no voter fraud. Elections end up being hotly contested even the presidency as we know from 2000 but you know senate elections hotly contested down to sometimes hundreds of votes so you don't need to cheat a lot to have a big difference in the outcome and people do cheat every year so when they say that there's no cheating i mean there's always election cheating it's just a question of how much here's what the president had to say on mail-in ballots play 12 you know, mail-in ballots are very dangerous there's tremendous fraud involved and tremendous illegality uh, they had 7.7 million applications sent out they have, uh, in the state of Nevada, they have a tremendous, uh, they have a tremendous drive-in where you just mail in your ballots. You can't do that. You got to go and vote. People have to check you. They have to see that it's you. They're supposed to look at you and check you and make sure that, I mean, when you get thousands of ballots and they put them in a bag and they just bring them in and people start, who knows where they come from? It's so obvious. I mean, frankly, they should have voter ID. That's what they should have. Now, the way that ballot harvesting works is that they'll send people, and this is why Democrats want to do this so badly, they'll send people to pick up ballots and deliver them to the polling place. So you don't, even, you don't have to leave your house. That's what the Democrats always want. And remember, that means there are just ballots out there, and you know, there's no, you don't have to show up, you don't have to, there's no ID, there's no, who, it's just b- ballots are all out there, and they just pick them all up, and they drop them all off. Mail in also means that people now don't have to actually show up, stand in line and vote. I think it's important that you have to go and do this. I don't want people to be able to vote from their couch with a big plate of Doritos in front of them, you know, watching a sitcom and they're just, you know, click a button on a screen. I think that it's the process of actually showing up and voting as annoying as it can be. Sometimes we want people who care about the process to have their voice heard in this way we, we this shouldn't this shouldn't be like you know voting for your favorite american idol contestant where you're on the couch and you press one button on your phone and bloop and that's even beyond the opportunities for fraud and and all kinds of shenanigans that i think the democrats see is just an, an enormous opening for their incredibly weak but well weak but still electorally speaking dangerous candidate in joe biden Time for roll call. Roll call, everybody. It is time. Let's get to it. Facebook.com slash Buck Sexton or Team Buck at iHeartMedia.com if you want to be in on the roll call action. And uh, I'm so glad to be back with all of you. And just so you know, um, producer Mark on a scale of 1 to 10, I didn't even ask him, but we all know that it was an 11. That's how much he missed me. About a 3. A three is pretty. I thought he was going to go like a two point something. So I'll take a three. The three is higher I'll than expected, wasn't it? Yeah. The hmm. good news is that is that the Godfather Michael Palka is a, is a super nice guy, and you know that uh, many many years ago he was one of my first guests ever on radio. I think he might have actually been my very first guest ever uh-huh. in a, on a show that I was hosting. Uh, he obviously did not teach you uh, about his clock. What's his clock? Just uh, using one. Oh, oh, you mean being on time? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, he's he's good that way. He is. I have a slightly different approach, you could say. All right. James kicks it off here with, uh, hey, Buck, I hope all is well in the Freedom Hut and to everyone in our great country upon which you expound so greatly, my friend. Well, thank you, James. You also have a great first name. I had to share this experience. My neighbor came to say hi out my front uh, out in front of my house. A normal exchange, as our brains so often think. But it came over to me after initial handshake. I shook his hand. Can I get in trouble for that? 
I wonder how many Americans are changing mentally in such a way as a result of all this tragic change. Thanks for all you do and the information you provide us all. Stay safe to all in the Freedom Hut. Shields High from Delaware. Hey, James, you're in Delaware. Nice. Wayne's World Party Time. Uh, yeah, man, it's a different thing now with shaking hands. I, I couldn't shake hands with anybody at the White House. Couldn't do it. So couldn't shake hands with the Trumpster. And I think we should salute. I don't like a lot of people did this. Some of the younger staffers did this elbow touch thing. I don't I don't like I don't like the elbow touch. Where producer Mark, are you an elbow touch guy right now? Where are you on this? Uh, I'm not a big elbow touch guy. I, I mean, if it's are a, you just a six foot distance? Don't touch me guy. Oh, absolutely. Oh, there we go. Unless it's a close friend that I know, like, you know, they haven't been anywhere. Then sure. Yeah. But if I don't know where you've been, no, I don't want you near me. And that's in general before COVID. Shouldn't shouldn't I be able to go like visit my I had a I had a COVID test yesterday. I mean, theoretically I could have been infected in the last twenty four hours, maybe. But let's say I got a COVID test today. I mean, what are the chances if I want if, even for people that I mean, I know you're not gonna answer this because you're not a doctor, but I was just thinking about this out loud. Shouldn't I be able to go see my parents? What are the chances that I that I am infected in like a course of a couple of hours after a test? I think it would be nice for some of us if we could at least get a test in the same day, go see higher no i'm not saying go see higher risk family members and smother them in hugs and stay inside all day with them and everything but if you just came back negative on the test you know aren't you do you know what i'm saying yeah i, mean, I, I think I get, it's worth i asking. think it, it more depends on like are your parents comfortable with that or are there are there people yeah, no, of course. that you're seeing comfortable i think it, it's more on the people than you personally yeah yeah because yeah. as i've already said i mean you know i'll i'm, I'm ready for this thing you know regardless although i, I think dogs can get it so maybe I should have little little Tallulah get a COVID test just to make sure everything's cool. Did you she bring Tallulah? Up. She sleeps on the foot of the bed now every night, and she snores like the little the little furry piggy she is. She snores every night, but it's cute though. Snoring dog snores are cute. I think human snores drive me insane. I can't really explain that. Yeah, that makes no sense. But w- did you bring Tallulah to the White House? Like, how did that go? Oh uh, no, Snow Snow Princess took care. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 I was very concerned. No, 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 we're good. Alice, hey, Buck, you win. I've been waiting for someone to mention acceptable risk, and you finally did. Thank you. I've had uncomfortable conversations with friends on social media who are, quote, willing to live differently, while I listen to my husband, who runs a media company, spend 10 hours plus a day from his makeshift home office trying to hang on, keeping employees upbeat, talking to financial people, and just trying to save everyone's livelihoods. This country cannot sustain this any longer. Keep banging the drum to get our economy going. You are doing great things, my friend. Well, thank you, Alice. And I can tell you, I, I, I pushed with everything I had yesterday. And the president knows. I mean, look, the president and I agreed. Everything we talked about, we ran a whole range of issues. We talked for a pretty long time. We see eye to eye on all of it. There was not a single thing that came up about COVID, about the deep state, about the economy, about the election, where I was, oh, I don't, you know, I don't really... I don't really see it that way, sir. You know, nope. We're like, oh yeah, absolutely. We we just see things the same way. He knows what he knows how bad it is right now for for millions of people across the country uh, who don't have jobs, who don't have paychecks coming in, who who are really worried or who've lost their businesses. So uh, I'm trying to, you know. So I, I mean, I pushed on that, but I'm pushing with somebody who's like, look, I'm I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I mean, it was pushing on an open door. So hopefully we get back up and running soon. And I'm just so for all of you, I just you know, shields high. Keep keep your head up. Keep your shield up. Focus on what you can do every day. Take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Take care of your loved ones. We're, we're going to rally from this. Um, and, you know, I, I know in the beginning it was all, oh, we'll all make it through together. And that was because we're also afraid we're all going to get sick and die. Uh, no, w- what we really are afraid of right now for a lot of folks is what happens to this country, what happens to our livelihoods and to our futures if this shutdown continues. Uh, so just stay with it push stay focused and we'll we'll get to a better we'll get to a better place i i hope it's sooner than later steven buck not seeing the mighty ducks how can you call yourself a gray beard millennial and not having seen mighty ducks very glad you like miracle good on producer mark for remember the titans oh it looks like we know who's pulling the uh pulling the roll call emails today huh so every time a positive producer Mark messages message comes up, it's my fault. I mean, no, but come on, this is like if if you if you had like your you know your your Anne Ethel write in, this would be like oh oh Mighty Ducks, remember the Titans. Producer Mark is awesome. I'm I don't saying. have an Aunt Ethel. 
Yeah, well, I, I didn't think so. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not my fault that I have fans, Buck. Uh, what do you want I, me to look, do? I'm not, not making up these they messages. Apparently, they apparently agree with you on sports movies, so whatever. Well, you just have poor opinions on that subject. Yeah, apparently. I got I got lit up on that one. I will say, I actually, you know what? Friday Night Lights, I like the TV show. I didn't really even like the movie all that much, so I, I'd have to strike that one from my record. I like the show. I thought the movie was actually a little grim, a little too gray. Toby, I know now people are going to get mad because there are some people like that. They're going to get mad at me for that one. But I, I would, I would here, here's what I would say. I would, I would knock Friday Night Lights off my list and replace it with Miracle at number five. So there you go, everybody. And when you watch Remember the Titans, you might knock something else off. Probably Creed at number four on yeah. my list, which now I agree. My first, I stand behind the first three on my list very firmly, which is, and people could rearrange them, but I think Rudy, um, uh, I was going to say Rambo. Whoops. Rudy, Rocky, and Major League are a great top three for sports movies. Um, but I think the other two. The other two were, that was, a, that was look, even the buck gets things wrong sometimes. All right? I'm not, I'm not, not perfect. I'm not perfect. I, I make mistakes, too. Uh. Toby, producer Mark, thank you for including Slapshot in the best sports movie conversation. You guys should consider Southwest Florida for the home base. Naples is a great area. I live 80 miles north in less urban country. I'm from Boston and will probably never leave here after 15 years. Yeah, no, producer Mark is, he says that the Freedom Hut's moving, it's moving to Florida. That's the, that's where producer Mark, he's already cast his ballot on that one. Why is the word if being used? If the Freedom Hut is moving? I'm just saying, you know, it, I'm, I'm, I look, it hasn't moved yet. That's true. But, we have to wait for all this all to pass before we're moving across the country. But you know, yeah, that's that's also true. But no, Florida would be a great place. Hey, look, El Rushbo is down there. Uh, my main man Bongino is down there. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people that are you know, Florida is becoming a real, dare I say, hotbed because it's so warm of uh, conservative media activity. I think also Newsmax has a pretty large facility down there. Uh, I, I, if it still exists, I mean, not not Newsmax, the uh, facility. I, I think it's still down there. But uh, Mark Buck, the alternative word you seek is chutzpah, the Yiddish word for moxie. How is it that producer Mark didn't immediately suggest this? Whoa, hey, you know, producer Mark doesn't. He's not the only one that knows Yiddish words, although he knows more than I do. Uh, they are right, though. Chutzpah is the perfect word. It's a good word, but. Is that a word that is in common enough usage that everybody would 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 get it if I were to throw that one in there? Uh, I guess we are in a bit of a New York bubble. Yeah, so I maybe just not. How many people would be like what, what chutzpah? So yeah, I don't know. Some people would get it. Some people wouldn't. And isn't uh, the the old joke? The definition of chutzpah is killing your mother and father and then uh, asking for the mercy of the court because you're an orphan. I have never heard that before. That's an old, that's like an old, that's an old, old timey kind of joke. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a really bad one. I, I didn't say it was a good joke. I just said it was a joke. Um, yeah, and I agree with you. It's not even, it's kind of like, ooh. Michael, we are your parents' age and we listen to your show every day. Very good until you got into pop culture. You called Lion King old Disney. Old Disney is Snow White and Sleeping Beauty. Lion King, Lion King is what our kids put in the VCR. Seems like a few years ago with music by Elton John. Oh, okay. All right, Michael. First of all, thank you for listening to the show. And I appreciate that uh, contemporaries of my parents love the show as much as everybody else. Thank you so much. Let, let, me, just, let me just clarify here. Um, I, I agree with what you're saying. I mean, Lion King is not old Disney, but it's older Disney. I also completely and utterly love and celebrate true old Disney, which would be what you brought up. Snow White, Sleeping Beauty. Um, I don't know if you'd put some of the... Uh, well, no, I, I think it would have been like, when's 101 Dalmatians? I think that's from the 60s or the Is 70s, it? maybe. When did 101 Dalmatians, the movie, come out, producer Mark? Because uh, I think of that as being more old school Disney. 1996. Oh, no, that's, oh, no, that's not that. That's, yeah. that's pretty recent then. So, yeah, I, I consider 90s Disney. Disney, look, it's over 20 years ago now. I, I consider that to be kind of older Disney, Listen, i got to say. Elton John's doing another farewell tour. He's, like, in his 70s. Just saying. I, I, don't, I don't get this with these. You know, the Rolling Stones, yeah, they had some great songs, but it's getting a little weird. You know, they're going to be rolling these guys out soon and actually rolling them because they're not going to be able to actually get out there of their own, of their own volition. 
I don't know. I, I, I think don't know. that's why Elton John's doing a farewell tour because he knows like it's over. I'm going to do one last big tour. Maybe I'll perform occasionally, but I'm not going to do these crazy tours anymore. He wants to be a dad. Hmm. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, Michael. Oh, no, that was Michael. Bob. Hey, Buck. I have a question I need to ask Snow Princess. My daughter is gluten free. And since lockdown, I've been baking for the family a lot more. Can you ask her what type of flour she prefers to use? Almond flour, rice flour? Is there a particular brand she recommends? Also, does she use different flour for different baked items, cakes versus cookies, etc.? I thank you, and my seven-year-old daughter thanks you. Um, well, Bob, first I would say, if you could, um, you know, my, my brother is the co-founder of a wonderful gluten-free baked goods company called Susie's. Uh, and they're online. You can go to uh, Susie's.com. Uh, so they they have gluten free products. I love them. I eat them every day. And again, it's my, my my brother's the founder. Just so you so you know. Um, but I eat Susie's donuts and muffins, uh, one or the other, not both usually, because that would be a little gluttonous. Uh, each morning with my Black Rifle coffee. And as for making it yourself, uh, I would say uh, a cup for cup flour is what it's called. That's what that's what Snow Princess usually uses. But, you know, if you guys want, I was thinking about doing something kind of fun where because she's here enough in the Freedom Hut in some capacity where if you guys wrote in questions specifically for Snow Princess, I would let her answer them as part of the show once just so you could kind of see because, you know, Mark gives you more of a view of like what I'm actually like when I'm not doing radio sometimes uh, with the lateness and the profanity. And uh, but, you know, Snow Princess might give you the difference, a different side of things where you have. Uh, you know, what, what's, what am I like in other ways? I don't know. Uh, we've thought about it. Obviously, it would have to be very PG, everybody. Don't Sounds like ideas. a perfect Facebook Live, as I've said before. Yeah, maybe it would be a good Facebook Live, actually. Um, so we've, we've thought about that. So I'll, I'll, I'll see. But yeah, cup for cup flour, if you're looking for it, that's the one. Um, and she's a, she's a, and she makes the best cookies I've ever had in my life. She is an expert baker. Uh, she's really, really good. So uh, she knows more. No, 101 Dalmatians came out in the 60s according to producer nick producer mark i uh, this is what google told me i googled I think it was re-released in the 90s it's from the 60s maybe it was remastered or something okay yes 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 it was a re-release uh, I was a, but even that, the first line of the uh wikipedia page is 1996 i'm not i'm not saying you did shoddy research i'm just saying oh wait a minute uh, that, that's the uh um, live action the live one. action one okay yes. that's my fault different 101 dalmatians i grew up with the live action one just saying yeah well the uh the the my favorite uh, is the character they have these guys who are like world war world war ii veteran canines who are like sergeant tips Yes, sir. The the Twilight Park. We shall gather together. We shall be uh, th these great characters. You'll never hear from you know the contemporary Disney catalog uh, or the the newer stuff in the Disney catalog. Um, so yeah. Anyway, Bob, I hope I answered your question. The answer is try a bunch of different mixes: um, almond flour, rice flour. I actually I like almond flour a lot, but cup for cup flour you can just use in place on rest on baked recipes for for cookies and things like that. Just get the it's in a blue. Uh, blue bag you'll see cup for cup flour it's fantastic and check out Susie's. Uh, my brothers i'm telling you that it's the amazing amazing and they're frozen so what you do is you take them out and you put them in the microwave and uh you know you put them in the microwave for 30 seconds to them really i do it for about 60 whether it's the muffin or the donut and they're delicious absolutely delicious maple and cinnamon and all these different great flavors uh charlene hey bucko two things does producer mark ever lol um, he's so dry, you could use him as a towel. <laughs> Just joshing you. I want to see if Producer Mark will let this comment through. Oh, he did. He did. Of indeed. course. Yes. Oh, Producer Mark, LOL. When, I, when yeah. I've said something, I know I've said something really funny when I get him to actually guffaw a little bit. It happens sometimes. Very rarely. It's rare. I have to play the straight man on the show. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but no, he does, he does laugh at things. He laughs at things. And uh, the, the, the best thing is, is the Producer Mark... Uh, commentary that only I get to hear sometimes as well. The off-air producer Mark commentary, which I could describe accurately as colorful. Colorful. I'm from Alex. Queens. <laughs> yeah. Have you or producer Mark watched the Space Force TV show trailer? I imagine they'll make fun of Trump. It looks like there's an AOC lookalike being tough on Steve Carell. Um, I don't know. Have you seen this? I haven't seen this. I've seen the trailer. It looks fantastic. And I will say... 
this was announced before Trump announced the Space Force, so it's not a spoof of anything. It's just um, the creator of The Office is teaming up with Steve Carell again, and it looks really funny. I mean, I, The Office is one of the great comedic enterprises of all time, so if this is kind of like that, and The Office was, was for its time, was kind of edgy, too, and act, it was, was actual comedy that anybody could watch. I thought The Office was fantastic for what it was. That's going to be the show for today, everybody. Make sure you check out BuckSexton.com and uh, you tell somebody to download the Buck Sexton Show. Spotify, iHeart app, Apple Podcasts. Check them out. Shields high.